can you see me hello good morning is it still morning yes it's still morning five by five dead man appreciate y'all all right uh thank you already to amanda's homestead 10 bucks on the diaper fund in the super chat appreciate you very much that's super cool um it's always nice to see a super chat before we even go live it is friday the 29th of march 2024 i'm the bear man from the internet let's get the business out of the way super quick um subscribe ring the little bell icon thumbs up youtube algo comments all that stuff share the show with people that you love uh, blah, 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 uh, free Bibles at grindstoneministries.com or Bibles that cost if you can afford one, grindstoneministries.com. Link is in the description. Refuge Medical, you spend 199 bucks or more, you get entered in to win a $10,000 night vision giveaway. Yeah, super cool. Dual tube, uh, white phosphor, uh, Gen 3 nods from Nightfall, hardhead veterans helmet, mount, blah, blah, blah. The Amazings, refugemedical.com, promo code is Bear Nation for free shipping. Okay, cool. I have a written brief. Um, it's on Patreon this morning, and it's basically a recap of what's going on with the Baltimore Bridge. And we've spent a fair bit of votes by the media at this point. You can go watch Wednesday's brief, which was approximately 48 hours ago. Tina Adkins, 10 bucks super chat. Thank you very much, Tina. That's super cool. Good morning to everybody in the chat. So I figured we would... Um, do the national intel and uh yeah because i think there's a lot of value in national intel so if you have intel that you would like to provide to the bear nation the email address is intel at bearindependent.com intel at bearindependent.com everybody say it with me if you can't spell bear independent you have self-selected out of the ability to provide intelligence to the bear nation root seller 10 bucks for the diaper fund. This this kid's going to have diapers made out of fine woven gold the way you guys are going. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Uh, the threat matrix is maxed out. That's correct, Striker Cade. That is correct. Um, maybe one day we'll get back to doing the whiteboard threat matrix again, but all the boxes are checked. So do the things. What are the things? Well, we talk about preparedness at this channel and the point of preparedness is to perpetuate normalcy for the people that you love say it's the same concept as a life insurance policy that if you get hit by a bus that your wife and kids aren't destitute the day after your funeral and that's what preparedness is it's a it's a metric it's a way by which we perpetuate normalcy for the people that we love comma balance is important um if you're on patreon the video that i just dropped this morning is Prepping then and now, 20 years of perspective, because I've been doing this for 20 years. And my mindset and the way that I do it has shifted dramatically over the last two decades. Chicky R, 10 bucks in the super chats. Thank you very much. The diaper fund is just banging this morning. Um, so you don't want to put such an emphasis on preparedness, perpetuating normalcy for the people that you love, that you lose the normalcy that you've already established with the people that you love. Yeah, the tinfoil hat conspiracy theory stuff, its it can be entertaining, but don't let it rob you of your joy. And if you haven't established normalcy with the people that you love yet, yeah, maybe take your foot off the preparedness accelerator, shift gears and go over here into family mode, work mode, faith mode, purpose and meaning mode, so that you have something worth perpetuating in the first place. Because there's a lot of people, whether they know it or not, that put too much emphasis on preparedness, they're waiting for the balloon to go up in whatever form or fashion that it might to justify all of their expenditures over the last year, 10 years, lifetime, expenditures in time and money so that it wasn't all for a lost cause. No, the point of preparedness is not to simply prepare for the sake of preparing, it's to give you the experiences the knowledge, the capabilities, and the tool set that you need to survive whatever may come that threatens the people that you love, that threatens your normalcy. So don't get those, don't get the scales out of balance on that. Okay. I don't hyper fixate on my life insurance policy. It exists. I pay the premium and there it is. Same thing with preparedness. It exists. I pay the premium. I invest a little bit each month toward, towards preparedness and there it is. But it's way more plausible that you wake up tomorrow morning and everything is still puttering along 
than it is you wake up tomorrow morning and nuclear weapons from Russia are inbound to your hometown. Could that happen? Yes. Could it be the Iranian sleeper cells or the, the military age males coming across the border? 100%. Grid goes down, high altitude EMP, or maybe it's just failures due to maintenance? Yeah. Could another boat smash into a bridge? Yep, 100%. A ship smash into a bridge. Yeah, that can happen. All that can happen. Likely, you go to sleep tonight, wake up tomorrow morning, and things are more or less the way they always have been. Are we circling the drain faster historically than it, than maybe we ever have before? It sure seems that way. But does it seem that way because it's actual? Or does it seem that way because we're bombarded by information 24-7, 365? Because like 100 years ago, if you lived in Dallas and a ship smashed into a bridge in Baltimore, it might be months before your local newspaper reported it. But today, it's instantaneous. So don't. my point here is don't get overworked, even as you see the day approaching. Yeah, forsake not the gathering together, even as you see the day approaching. With that in mind, that mindset in mind, because you do not have permission from me to use content I produce to freak out to justify your expenditures, okay? Not allowed to freak out. That's not what this channel is about. There's a thousand other prepper channels you can watch if you want to go freak out about something. Negative. Not allowed to do that here. My God is God. He's sovereign over all things, including the Chinese and the Russians and the illegals, including you. He's sovereign over all things, and his will is going to be done, whatever that may be. And whether I understand it or not, my job is to be in line with his will to the best of my ability. And then exist and thrive in my household for provision, protection, blessing of the people that I love. And preparedness is just one way that I do that. Okay. Now that we've laid the ground rules, National Intel, intel at barrenpennant.com. Good morning to everybody in the chat. These are all quotes. I'm not going to say quote over and over again because I don't have the patience for that. I contacted you last week reporting that Texas dairies have been experiencing a virus in their production herd. <clears throat> I'm following up to report New Mexico and Kansas both now have dairies with the virus. Idaho has stopped allowing any new dairy animals into their state. I haven't seen anything on the mainstream media about this yet. We work in the animal health industry and are closely monitoring this as it develops. Develops, not develops. That's not a word. Develops. They still have not been able to identify the virus. Texas A&M labs are working around the clock trying to identify the virus and get a handle on it. oof -da. So, yet another systematic attack. Is it natural? Yeah, entirely possible it's natural. Am I prone to believe that after 2019? No, I'm not prone to believe that. Movid19 says Steel City. That's great. Um, so another systematic attack on the food production industry, food production sector, because there's a lot of industries inside of that sector. Ergo, what do we do? Um, you start producing food. You live your little life. You put raised beds in the backyard, even if you live in suburbia. Yep. You find the local farm that produces raw milk and you get in your car and drive and you drive over there and you buy glass growlers filled with gallons of raw milk and then you distribute them like a little local neighborhood cartel to the people in your neighborhood. How do I know? Don't tell anybody, but we do that here. Yeah, we have our own raw milk distribution cartel in eastern Oklahoma. However... We also technically live on an Indian reservation and nobody's really sure who has jurisdiction where. So, and of all the things in the world to be upset about raw milk in this neck of the woods, like there ain't enough cops to deal with the actual bad guys, let alone the raw milk smuggling cartel. <clears throat> That's what you do. That's what I recommend you do. Next, my high ranking husband, this is a quote, I'm not married to a dude. My high-ranking husband retired from the Navy a year ago. The talk of recall is real. It's been real for about six months. I've been privy to many conversations he's had about what's coming down the line. <clears throat> so 
in the mouths of two or three, let a thing be established. Um, I've had a dozen people that I know personally, like have relationships with, have context with that I've spoken to about this. I've seen paperwork that they have been passed by the DOD that has been screenshotted and passed to me. The efforts to recall, quote, critical MOSs and pilots, end quote, is very, very, very real. Um, and the argument is being made that it's due to poor recruiting. Um, but the people that I've spoken to about this, the majority of them believe that it's more ominous than that based upon, uh, and some of these people are still in, trying to get out. They're at the end of their tenure, end of their contract, and their commanding officers are basically saying, hey, you're not allowed to go anywhere. I need you. And they're like, boss, I've been here almost 20 years. I need to go. They're like, you're not allowed to go. I need you. And so the reporting is it feels way more ominous than a recruiting shortage. We'll see. I don't know. I've got 12 months left. IRR 11B, my MOS, says RZ Arecta. RZA. You're just RZA now because I can't pronounce your freaking name. But Roger that. 12 months left, 11 Bravo. Um, so that's what I have seen personally with my own eyeballs passed to me from people who are who are currently in, about to get out, or who have recently separated. Next, I just want to let you know that Boeing is in the process of outsourcing all of its facilities maintenance personnel, including those who work at the DOD facilities. The company taking over that position is JLL. The current facilities teams have had many meetings with Boeing and with JLL. Neither seem to know how this is going to work, quote, but it will. It all seems like an incredible cluster F. Boeing is in the process of accounting for and labeling all of its facilities assets enterprise wide, and it must be done by the end of October. Seattle will be the last site this needs to happen at. I believe Boeing is in the process of a major consolidation, selling out or filing bankruptcy. Please make sure I remain anonymous. I'd hate to end up like the whistleblower. Yeah. Um, I didn't say your name. And you actually didn't provide your name, so we should be good. Maybe uh, contact your sheriff if you're concerned about your safety. I've had a couple of um, safety concerns here over the years between being a personality on the Internet and then doing what we do at Caleb House with anti-human trafficking. There's been a couple credible threats. Um, and living where I live in eastern Oklahoma, I just called the sheriff and I articulated to them what the credible threat was. And the sheriff was, it's funny when the Diplo speak comes out and it's in your favor. Thank you, sir, for articulating the credible threat to your safety. I will make a written recording of this call and file it should anything happen. Like basically saying, got you. Let's backstop the, any legal shenanigans that could result from this because you reported the credible threat. Um, and then beyond that, it's like, Hey bro, you do what you gotta do. Roger that tracking. Um, and the call was less to say, Hey, I need help in case weirdos show up. It was more to say, if any weirdos show up, I'm going to do what I got to do. And I'm well within my rights to do that. And I'm calling to inform you not request permission. And because we live in rural Eastern Oklahoma, their answer was Roger that if you need us holler, we'll be there as soon as we can. Alan Carter, 20 bucks in the super chat. I appreciate you very much. Next, thoughts on water collection. I took a professional distillers course in Kentucky last year, and part of the myriad of teachings was looking for ways for businesses to become more efficient and pro-green. Where rain barrel collection may be illegal, if you have an LLC, there are government grants for small businesses to create water reclamation systems. Oh, that's a great word. LLC, I think, is no more than 200 bucks anywhere in the nation. I could be wrong. I've never incorporated a California LLC before, but let's just say it's 200 bucks. And now you have tax advantages that you have a business on paper, a limited liability company that you can then siphon purchases through. 
which creates uh, tax write-offs, file a Schedule C. This is not professional advice. Take bare words at your own risk, asterisk, caveat, insert disclaimers here. But then you can file a Schedule C and you can uh, deduct all of the costs related to your water reclamation system while also potentially receiving a grant. Now, for me, myself personally, when we have, uh, we had a grant writer on staff at Caleb House for close to two years. And we had a grant writer on staff at Refuge Medical for 18 months or so. Um, applied for, I believe the technical term is a bajillion grants. And on the Caleb House side, zero grants were awarded. And Refuge Medical side, I think maybe four were awarded, maybe out of the hundreds that were applied for. So understand that applying for grants does not mean that you will receive grants and that there are people whose entire profession is simply to apply for grants. Now, if you find a grant writer, typically the way they work is the grant writer, they're like a third party uh, contractor for you. You hire them to write the grant on your behalf. And typically what they will do is either you can pay them out of pocket or usually in the industry, they take a percentage of the grant. In some cases, it's as low as 10%. In other cases, it's as high as 40% of the grant. But do your own research if you want a grant for water reclamation after filing your LLC. <coughs> Go for it. I had a hard time with the, uh, especially on the Caleb House side of, yeah, why don't you go get us a grant and then you take 40% of it. And it's like, I'm trying to use this money to do Yaw's work. I got a, a workman is worth their hire. But if you take 40% of the grant and leave 60% over for the organization to rescue and restore kids, that seems a little skewed to me, which is why we hired somebody and paid them out of pocket to do the job. And again, it, zero grants materialized. So maybe that was the wrong approach. I don't know. But I digress. If you have an LLC, there are government grants for small businesses to create water reclamation systems. In downtown Kentucky, they had large koi ponds that recycled water into their distilling operation and clean water systems for the business. Titles matter, especially when one system is outlawed and the other is funded. In a non-business sense, where rain barrels may be illegal, ponds are not. Processing the water is more difficult, or with the right equipment, it isn't too difficult. Regardless, if you need water or grain soup, this supply is essential and really fun to study. Shalom. Yeah, knowing how to be a professional distiller could be beneficial for lots of reasons, says me. <clears throat> Next, I work for a large health healthcare organization in Pennsylvania and asked one of my senior co-workers to find out if we'd received the messages from FEMA about being prepped for MCIs mass casualty incidents turns out our organization did receive that message thank you for the confirmation thank you for the validation i'm not talking out of my ass when i tell you these things i may tell you something that appears to be true at one point in time that ends up not being true at a later date because of the intel i had available to me at the time but i'm never going to knowingly lie to you uh, so in the mouths of two or three, let a thing be established mass casualty incidents. I've been hearing all about it from all over the place. I do appreciate you reaching out from Pennsylvania and saying, turns out you're right. I'll read this again. I work in it for a large healthcare organization in Pennsylvania and asked one of my senior coworkers to find out if we had received the message from FEMA about being prepared for mass casualty incidents. Turns out. Our organization did receive that message. The folks he spoke to believed the warning was related to the upcoming eclipse and the increased potential for accidents. This coworker is a prepper, and when he told me what he had found out, he also flat out said he didn't believe that motor vehicle accidents and travel incidents could be the only reason for such a message. He thinks there is something more. On a related note, I've also been finding out a fair number of people at my organization are preparing to some degree. Folks I wouldn't have expected are telling me about how they are stocking up on food and necessities. Really great to see the message starting to sink in. 
Well, as I've told you guys before, and I'll tell you again, for anybody who has an entrepreneurial bone in their body, projections are that the preparedness industry will grow by 500% over the next five years. It's not necessarily, as Warren Buffett would say, how hard you row the boat that you're in, it's what boat that you're in. The market matters a lot. And so if you're going to be in a business, you want to be in a market that's growing, not a market that's shrinking. If you sell advertisements in newspapers, your market is shrinking, compounding. And what's it? Half of them, three quarters of them go out of business every year. That's a shrinking market. The preparedness space is projected to grow 500% over the next five years. Why? A little thing called COVID-19 and uh, people realizing that, hey, maybe the government doesn't have your best interests at heart. So <clears throat> being in the prepper space, if you will, and we all know there is a subset of preppers who their, their answer to uh, whatever problems they encounter is throw their Amex card at it. I'm not saying you should take advantage of people, but if you can provide a good product or service that creates value in that space, you should. My two cents. Uh, as far as a lot more people becoming preppers, in the county that I live in, we've had lots of conversations with influential people in the county, in many cases spurred on by the upcoming eclipse. There are a lot of people are preparing whose eyes have been open to this because when the emergency management in the county or the state basically throws their hands up and says, guys, we're doing our best, but we really don't know what's going to happen here. And that's not a knock on them. It is what it is. Uh, the, everybody else is like, well, if the people with badges and guns and titles don't know what to do about this, I might want to have some something, some plan figured out for me and my household. And what's amazing to me is how many people are getting into the prepper space that don't know what to do at all. Because to me, <clears throat> it seems to me that there's a wealth of information on this, a lot of which is conflicting. So if you find somebody who's new to preparedness and wants to get in at the ground level and build a solid foundation, prepper classroom playlist here at this channel, you can just put in the search bar, bare independent prepper classroom. It's dozens of videos, whiteboarded out, uh, basic concepts and it's free on YouTube. Prepper Classroom Playlist. Okay? Okay, cool. Next. I guess this is not so much intel. By the way, I don't read these beforehand. Like, I'm reading them now. Uh, so, like, I'm not prepped up. I don't have notes on any of this stuff. I guess this is not so much intel, but vital information for prepping. An odd windstorm hit our area last week, causing some wildfires. We have a close friend who lost her home on the nearby mountain, which also happened to be a planned bug out location for several families to come together. Now, you may be asking yourself, Bear, if you don't read these beforehand, how do they end up in the brief and on Patreon and all of that? I have an awesome team of people. And uh, that when you email intel at bearindependent.com, you're actually contacting my dance monkeys, uh, the intel team that puts these reports together. So they compile all of these things. They get posted to Patreon, and then I read them. So, yeah, there's there's a system there. There's a hierarchy there. <clears throat> so shout out to the Dance Monkeys for putting the brief together three days a week for, and sometimes five days a week for the last several years. Good job, Dance Monkeys. Couldn't do it without you. All right, so bug out location on the top of a mountain got hit by heavy winds. My brother-in-law and I went up and cut open all four safes that were in the basement. We wanted to get to them before any roamers found the place. Everything in them was a total loss. We estimated well over 275,000 rounds of ammo was lost. Over 100 recovered firearms, but burned beyond use. Thousands of pounds of food storage gone and too many tools and pieces of equipment to count. My point is that we should all have a plan B and even better a plan C. Also know that just because, a, just because a Liberty safe has a fire rating, depending on where that safe is kept, those ratings may only amount to a pile of ash. 
The safes were in the basement and had ratings of about 1,400 degrees for 60 minutes. When in a basement with two floors above, everything will cave in around those safes and cook the hell out of them for days. Another point is updating your insurance policies as you collect stuff. Yes, you may not want insurance agencies knowing what you own, but it can be gone in an instant with no recourse, no way to recoup the losses. That is a risk many of us take. Insurance will pay for her home and many of the contents, but she will max out and not get near enough money to replace everything that was lost. One other point, take pictures of what you own and put it in a fire safe within a fire safe. You've got to be able to prove what you have. That's a, a really good word. Having all your eggs in the basket. I know a lot of y'all are still working on building your first basket. I, I'm new to prepping or maybe I've, I've been watching prepper content for a while, but I haven't really taken it as seriously as I should have. And I'm still working on my first basket. Now you're telling me I should have two, three, ten different baskets. Yes, one step at a time. When you get the first basket full, you should divide it in half and put half of it somewhere else. Keep half of it here. You get those both of those baskets full again, divide it in half and then put some over here, put some over there. Because if it's all in one place and something catastrophic happens, like what happened here, you're SOL, buddy. Again, and this is a massive loss. I mean, years worth of food, 275,000 rounds of ammo, 100 firearms. It's a big deal. Um, you're talking probably well over a million bucks to replace all that stuff. Okay. The stuff is not the important part. The stuff allows us to perpetuate life. And so perspective here, if nobody died in the fire, praise Yah. Because I've been on enough deployments with Grindstone Ministries talking to people standing on their bare concrete slab where their house used to be, where they're just praising the Father that they're still here. There's a guy named Corey in Rolling Fork. I think he watches the channel now. And uh, his house was half smashed. It was like half gone from the tornado in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. And there was a uh, cast iron clawfoot tub in the corner of his house. So we showed up to help clean up the debris. And a lot of times we will do demolition on a house that is destroyed. Then we've had people ask us, why do you demolish the houses? And the answer is because when they're destroyed, when they're totaled by the insurance company, a portion of the check that the homeowner receives has to go to demolition to smash the house into a pile and haul it off of their property. Well, if we can do that for them while we're in the neighborhood, we save that person 10, 20, 30, $50,000 that they can put back towards their new house, new contents, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why we demo houses that have been destroyed by tornadoes and hurricanes, because somebody's going to have to pay for it and we might as well do it for free. We save the homeowner that money. But I was talking to Corey and he said, hey, I don't care about anything that's inside of that house except that clawfoot tub. If you can save it, I'd appreciate it. I said, sure. What's up with the tub? And he said, well, it was my grandma's tub and we put it in the house and it was on like the far southwest corner of the property. <clears throat> the tub was. Uh, he said it was on the opposite end of the house, northeast corner. And when this storm came in, my wife threw my kids, little kids, little kids, diapers. My wife threw my kids in the tub and she laid down over the top of the tub and held on to it while praying to Jesus to keep us safe. And the storm threw that tub through two or three interior walls until it stopped on the corner of the foundation. And if it hadn't have done that, the side of the house that it was on doesn't exist anymore. So that tub saved my kid's life. And so if we could keep it, I'd like to keep it. Old combat vet, five bucks, bless you. So maybe material things like that, yeah, because there's a story behind it, but everything else is just stuff. And so on the one hand, you should be prepared to mitigate the loss of stuff. On the other hand, understand that the stuff is to mitigate the loss of life. That's the purpose in the first place. So yes, that tub was their ark. Exactly, encouraging community. Exactly. And I was like, bro, I will do whatever you want me to do with this tub. 
wherever you need it, we got it. So we did. We, we took some forks on a machine, picked it up, moved it off the foundation, and set it all the way over here. And uh, when we got done there, that tub and a bare concrete foundation were the only things left on that property. Um, so on, while well, on the one hand, I absolutely understand the catastrophic loss of losing all these things. On the other hand, the stuff is to perpetuate normalcy for the people that we love. And if the people that we love are still alive, success. <clears throat> Next, I recently received this information firsthand from a family member. I have a family member who is a manager at IBM in the United Kingdom. He said IBM Worldwide has decided to make major changes. Even though they had a profitable year last year, IBM is laying off over 60% of their employees worldwide. IBM is also shutting down several projects. Sam Off Grid, bless you. Thank you for the super chat. IBM is also shutting down several projects. They had a major project called Cirrus 2.0, where they had over $2 billion invested. It was headquartered out of Dallas and accessed worldwide. IBM has pulled the plug on that project and they have walked away from it and the investment. Are y'all familiar with international business machines and how they got their start with their first big contract was before they were international business machines um, the punch card technology that was used for the census in the United States of America and the ability to use those punch cards. Uh, caught the attention of a certain German dictator in uh, the 1930s. Yeah. And IBM was bankrolled on uh, on the backs of a certain German dictator and his ability to systematically uh, delete approximately 12 million people. Yeah. But nothing to see here. So back to the brief. What do they know that we don't? 63 years of living on a farm in Oregon. First observation, an Asian person hitchhiking ever. Monday, 325 noon. Two military-aged males standing next to a two-man all-weather tent pitched on the on-ramp to I-5 southbound from Roseburg. Both 25-year-old soldiers were fit, well-dressed, and presenting a positive military bearing. They would have fit in with fourth-year VMI cadets I met on tour in 1990. Hitchhiking wasn't my concern. These men were postured in parade rest, observing traffic making up and pattern. Observing traffic makeup and patterns. The same men and tent were observed yesterday, 12 miles north, presenting the same behavior. They were not in a hurry travel mode, just manning an observation post. Next and last, I'm a homeschooling mother of five boys, and we all have learned so much from your channel. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. Two weeks ago, people in our area were notified that one of the local water companies would be putting their customers on water restrictions for the coming summer months. Restriction examples are no lawn watering, no washing cars, no pool filling, and gardens may only receive an inch per week, which is actually pretty normal for the gardens here. While this wasn't my particular provider, I knew it was only a matter of time before something happened to ours. Sure enough, today I was alerted to a news article saying the company that provides our water is taking the route of significantly increasing their rates. Lovely. It is reported we can see an up to 800% increase in our bill. Due to rainwater catchment and other storage wisdom from you and Jack Spearco, my particular homestead will be okay. But that doesn't negate the fact that this is more serious than is being let on. So, yet again, water, kind of important. That is the brief for today. 29 March, 24, Friday. National Suicide Prevention Hotline, dial 988-988-988. If you're feeling like shit, feeling like you want to end it, don't. Call somebody, talk to somebody, work it out. The world will not be a better place if you put a gun in your mouth and pull the trigger. Please don't. National Suicide Prevention Hotline, 988. If you want a t-shirt, a hat, a coffee mug, whatever, you can go to barrendependent.com. There's swag available there. That helps us pay for the house that I'm building in my front yard, and I appreciate it. Plus, you get a, a cool t-shirt, hat, sticker, coffee mug, whatever. 
Refuge Medical, I told you guys uh, right now, ongoing. Um, there's two concurrent things happening at Refuge Medical right now. Right now is the FJB promotion. So I believe if you use code FJB, you can get either a Refuge hat or a Refuge tote bag, a little bit of swag at no cost with your order. And then also all orders over 199 bucks uh, get you entered in to win that $10,000 night vision giveaway. Super cool. SOBs are in stock. What's the SOB? This is the SOB. It weighs a pound, weighs as much as one loaded AR mag. Towels webbing on the back. You can mount it to a belt or a plate carrier or a chest rig or a headrest or whatever. Cat tourniquet on the bottom, shot corded on. Pop this open, pull the handle, and now I've got my blowout kit in my hand, and it's got all the stuff you need, none of the stuff you don't. Pressure bandage, combat gauze, like real combat gauze, not Chinese off-brand. Oh, totally make a good for no breed for you gauze, like real, real Teleflex quick clot combat gauze. Um, Naso, pharyngeal airway, chest seals, duct tape, Sharpie, all the things. And made in America, guaranteed forever. Okay. So SOBs are in stock, bear facts are in stock, bear minimum is in stock, adventure kits are in stock, bleeding uh, control kits are in stock, buckets are in stock, a bunch of stuff is now back in stock. So it's Friday, it's payday, and uh, if you need, I'm not fear-mongering you into this, if you need some medical stuff, please consider refugemedical.com. If you use promo code Bear Nation, you get free shipping on your order. And uh, the store, because it's Friday, the store will close at sundown Friday evening, and it will reopen at sundown Saturday evening, because six days ye shall labor. The seventh is a Sabbath of rest unto Yahuwah, your Elohim, the Lord your God. Cool. Uh, what else? Let's see. GrindstoneMinistries.com. If you need to buy a copy of the scriptures, Dylan Carson, spirits moving, and I'm starting a food prepping business if I can post the link. Dylan, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Thanks for the super chat. Um, if you need a copy of the scriptures, like this right here, this is the word of God. This is uh, a, a new translation translated directly from the original source texts. So it's not a translation of a translation. Um, we sell them at our cost at grindstoneministries.com. And if you cannot afford one, you just contact us through grindstoneministries.com. Tell us where to send you one and I'll send you one at no cost. Okay, cool. Caleb House. CalebHouse.org is our 501c3 not-for-profit anti-human trafficking organization, which is a bunch of $50 words that basically means it's the way that we make sure that bad stuff happens to bad people and we can rescue and restore kids who have been seriously big R-worded by assholes. And we can't do that without y'all. So I appreciate your support very much. If the spirit convicts you and you want to plug in, you can find us at CalebHouse.org. Bo Brinson, five bucks, super chat. Thank you very much. And if the spirit does not convict you, that's okay. There's probably a thousand other ministries that could use your support. So find one of them and pour into them. But uh, what we do with Caleb House, we could not do without y'all. And now with that, let's talk to the creator of the universe, Cuz. And if you're not into that, you can go ahead and click off right now. I'm into that. You might not know this. But I am an ordained pastor, and I'm still figuring out exactly what that means. But I'm pretty sure one of the things that it, you're supposed to do is pray. Thanks for the super chat, old combat But Never give me a super chat for prayer, by the way. I don't want, ever want to get paid for the Father's word. Okay, I know a workman is worth their hire, but I have other ways that I get paid. So I don't monetize our YouTube Bible videos. I don't charge profits on the word. I don't take a salary from our ministries. I just try and do pastor stuff to the best of my ability. And that includes praying. So that's what we're going to do now. Oh, good morning, Father Yah. Father, you tell me that there are people here that haven't prayed in a long time. Yeah. Okay. Father, see them and hear them. And hear their words, their words of their heart, even if they can't utter it with their lips this morning because of 
time and distance and shame and pain and hurt. Father, I pray that you'd minister to them today, that you would be near to them today. Father, and there are those who want to come home again. So if you're one of those people, just say this with me. Father, Yah, I am a broken sinner. And I need help. I need you. Father, I confess that Yeshua is the Messiah. And I want the covering of his blood for the atonement of my sins. Father, Yah, please forgive me. And I will walk in your ways to the best of my ability. Father, thank you for the promise of life. Thank you for removing the curse of death. Father, teach me to walk in your ways, and I will do it. Help me to love you with everything that I've got, and to love my neighbor as myself. Father, forgive me of my sin and my transgression. Father, I love you and I need you. And I pray these things in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. That's the prayer we were supposed to pray this morning. And if you are one of those people that prayed that prayer for the first time, or for the first time in a long time, welcome home. There's a... Let's go to the book. From the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is how you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face to shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. And thus they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I myself shall bless them. I hope you guys have an awesome day of prep, an awesome day of rest. And I will see you when I see you. Shalom.